Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Monday, May 2nd, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted that you are part of my life as well. Well, today is May 2nd, and that means it is Matthew Wade's birthday. Happy birthday, Matthew. We're so glad that you're part of our church. We're glad you're part of our fellowship. You're such an awesome young man. It's great to watch you growing up among us. I hope that today you are surrounded by the love of your family and friends, that you know that you are loved by your church, by your family, friends, by your Jesus, that you get lots of great presents and you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Um, God bless you, Matthew. Uh, we had a great service yesterday on Sunday, and uh, it was followed by a, a short congregational meeting where we announced that uh, we are hiring uh, two people to join our pastoral staff team. Um, we're, we've hired, um, that's me there, and, and to my left, there's Brianna Miller. We've hired Brianna Miller to serve as our director of children's ministries and worship ministries. And uh, to her left is Joel Van Heemst, who's been part of our staff team. He's been our youth director for some time. And then to his left is Jordan Laborde, who has been hired to be the pastor of uh, outreach and missions. And so our, our pastoral staff team is now four people. And uh, I'm excited about that. They're, they're coming on board uh, to expand our staff team. We believe that this is an opportunity for us to help our church to grow as uh, sp spiritually as, as people in Christ and also to grow in terms of our ability to reach out to uh, our community more strongly. So very excited that these folks are, are with us and uh, it's a great good times for New Beginnings Church. I preached on Sunday out of uh, Luke chapter 14 verses 15 through 23. Luke 14 verses 15 through 23. And Jesus in this passage tells a story about uh, a man who has a banquet and uh, he invites um, many people from the community to come in and uh, as to the banquet. And so he sends out the invitations ahead of time that the banquet's gonna be on thus and such a day. And then as it was, was traditional at the time, he, would, he sent out an announcement the day of saying the banquet is now ready, come and be part of the banquet. But uh, Jesus says that um, there in, in very strong language that uh, none of the people that, the, uh, that were invited wind up coming to the banquet. They, they all make excuses and they all fail to come. And at the end of the story, he says that none of those uh, who were invited to the banquet came. Here, here's uh, he says, verse 18, but they all alike began to make excuses. They all alike began, began to make excuses. Everyone who was invited made excuses. That's a very strong uh, total language there that all of them made excuses. And at the end of the story, verse 24, Jesus says, for I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. It's very strong language, especially when you think about the fact that Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God to the banquet and the those who are invited to the religious people of Jesus's day. Um, and so it begs the question, is Jesus telling the truth? Is, is it one of the questions that we wrestle with? Is Jesus telling the truth that all of the religious people make excuses that none of them wind up in his banquet? Is that what Jesus is indicating there? Now, it seems that way because he uses total language. All made excuses, none entered into his banquet. But the truth is that it's very common in the Bible to use totalizing language for things that are not necessarily every single person. Um, you'll notice in the Old Testament, for example, that there are times when God says to annihilate uh, uh, an entire population and Israel goes and they have a battle against uh, the, the people who uh, God had said to annihilate. At the end, it says the people of Israel say, and we, we did as you commanded and we didn't leave a single person breathing. Uh, and they would say, even with totalizing language, not a man, woman, boy or girl, not anything that breathed did we allow to live. And then later on, you find out that there were survivors. That in fact, there were lots of survivors that there were people who, uh, who from those nations who wound up uh, being incorporated into the people of Israel later on. 
um, well, which is it, right? Did they did they annihilate everything that breathed, or did they leave some survivors? Uh, the Bible will often use totalizing language, uh, everybody, everywhere, and yet uh, not and not mean uh, really everybody everywhere. Um, so it's it's tricky, right? And 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 the question is. Uh, why would the Bible be written this way? Well, in the culture of the day, that sort of language was common. It was very common to use language such like that to, to sort of talk about a big number or, or a, a complete victory rather than, um, you know, uh, rather than really meaning every single solitary person. Um, the Bible is written in the language and the idiom and the and the lingo of the people of the time. And in order to understand it, we have to be careful to uh, try to listen to the text in the in the way that the people who originally received it would have heard it. And you might say, well, Pastor House, I, I thought the scripture was God's word to everybody everywhere all the time. It is, it is God's word to everybody everywhere all the time. And the scripture is reliable, it is authoritative and trustworthy. Um, but it doesn't mean that, that you're gonna understand every passage the first time you hear it right away. There's a, a biblical doctrine called the clarity of scripture. And, and the, the doctrine of the clarity of scripture says that understanding the Bible is possible, that we can understand the scriptures, but it takes time. It takes time to understand the scriptures. There's some things that won't make sense to us on first blush. It takes time, it takes effort. We have to, to take some time to try to understand the text in its original context. How would the people who originally heard this uh, have, for the first time, have heard this, this passage? What did it mean to them? We have to use ordinary means. It doesn't require sort of a, an angel to come down from heaven to reveal to us the truth of what the passage says, but it does require the use of ordinary means. And that means translation helps. That means dictionaries. It means uh, the use of, of, of tools that God has given us to enable us to understand the scripture. We have to have a willingness to obey. There's an interesting th truth in scripture that if you're not willing to obey the scriptures, you won't understand the scriptures. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inspired the scriptures and uh, is at work today to help us to understand the scriptures, but we need his help. And that means re it requires humility. We need to understand that maybe we are not the smartest person who's ever lived, and maybe we need the help of other, other people. Maybe we need to understand that there may be some things we can't immediately understand, and we need to take the time to do so. We believe that scripture is clear. We believe that scripture can be understood. We believe, though, that it takes time. It takes effort. It takes uh, the use of ordinary means, the, 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 the Holy Spirit and humility and a willingness to obey in order to fully understand what the scriptures have to say. Um, none of that contradicts the fact that the scripture is true, that it's clear, but it, it's not necessarily clear in the sense that it was written in 20, 21st century lingo. It was written to a particular people at a particular time in a particular place, and it's true for us as well. We just, have, we just need uh, to take some care and some effort to understand it along the way. I hope this is helpful to you. Um, I, what I want to do with this is to say that scripture is authoritative and trustworthy, but it, 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 it requires effort to understand. However, it also rewards the effort that we take to understand it. As we understand the scriptures, as we dig into the scriptures and study them, um, it pays massive dividends to us in our lives. So it's worth taking the time. It's worth taking the effort to understand. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you that in your love for us, Lord, you inspired scripture and uh, you told us uh, exactly what you wanted us to know. But you didn't tell it in sort of a, a uh, abstract, timeless way. You, in, you incorporated it, you in, in, incarnated it in, uh, in uh, the way and the the, the, the speech and the, the idioms of the people of the time. And so it does take effort for us to understand the scriptures and it takes the help of your Holy Spirit. But thank you, Lord, that you do send your Holy Spirit, that you have given us the means to understand it. And that if, if we take the time, if we, if we value your scriptures enough to take the time to understand it, that it will pay great dividends in our lives. Lord, I pray that each of us would commit ourselves to taking the time to understand the word. 
I pray today for Matthew Wade on his birthday. Please bless him, encourage him, strengthen him. Um, it, yesterday was Maggie Carrington's birthday. Lord, I pray for your grace for Maggie. I pray, Lord, that uh, that you would bless all of us, Lord, in, in your church. Uh, may we uh, grow in you as disciples, and may we uh, make invitation to those outside to come in uh, to be blessed in your kingdom. Lord, we love you and we trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love your new beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.